Hi everyone, let me briefly sum up what we talked about in the previous videos. In the late 19th century, German mathematicians Cantor and Dedekind defined the new number system consisting of rational numbers and irrational numbers. In this new system, rational and irrational numbers were newly defined in such a way that they together became an arithmetic continuum corresponding to the fantasied geometric continuum. This new system is called the real number system, and the newly defined rational and irrational numbers are called real numbers. According to the definition of the real numbers, each real number is defined as a collection of infinitely many entities, and one of the ways to express them is, as you can see, infinite decimal representations. However, it turned out that even before, rational and irrational numbers were defined in this new way and called real numbers. Both kinds of numbers were already considered real in the literal sense of the word by many prominent mathematicians. In particular, the reason why they considered irrational numbers real, not imaginary, was because of their religious belief in geometry. More specifically, since they believed that geometry was a body of truth, and considered the fictional and invisible geometric figures to be real, or rather perfect, they also considered irrational numbers that were justified by these fictional and invisible geometric figures real. Since this kind of belief in geometry originated in ancient Greece, especially in Plato's time, we decided to go back in time to Plato to find out what they thought of mathematics and geometry. Actually, since their religious belief in mathematics underlies our modern mathematics, by looking into their idea of geometry and mathematics, we can figure out what kind of religion our modern mathematics really is. So, let's begin there. Let me first quote some of Plato's remarks. As I said in the second video titled, How Did Irrational Numbers Originate? It is a well-known fact that Plato wrote above the gates of his academy, let no one ignorant of geometry enter here. This is a pretty strong statement in favor of geometry. From this, you can tell how significant geometry was to him and his group. As a matter of fact, Plato went further. He is also known to have said, God eternally geometrizes. It might be a little shocking to some people who just thought that Plato was just a philosopher and for him, mathematics had nothing to do with God. As you can see, however, Plato related mathematics to God. Rather, for him, God was the mathematician. You might still think that he just said these kind of things to stress the importance of geometry, but that's not true. If you look at the seventh book of the Republic, written by Plato, he says that the knowledge at which geometry aims is knowledge of the eternal and not of art, perishing and transient. Geometry will draw the soul toward truth and create the spirit of philosophy. From these kind of remarks, we figure that for Plato and his followers, mathematics, especially geometry, was not just an academic activity, but a spiritual and religious activity. So in short, mathematics was a religion for them. As you have seen in the first video titled, What is the true nature of mathematics? The Pythagoreans were a religious group, and they had a belief that all phenomena in the universe can be reduced to whole numbers and their ratios. However, the former NYU professor Morris Klein said, Plato when further than the Pythagoreans, he wished to substitute mathematics for nature herself. This means they believed mathematics was truer than nature itself. This strong religious belief in mathematics has been passed down from generation to generation through the so-called great mathematicians and scientists. I will just introduce a few of their remarks. First, Descartes who initiated the tradition of using the word real 
to refer to rational and irrational numbers said, I count it as the most certain, the truth which I conceived clearly as it regards figures, numbers, and other matters which pertain to arithmetic and geometry, and in general, to pure and abstract mathematics. He also said, only the mathematicians contrive to reach certainty and evidence. The Italian scientist and mathematician Galileo Galilei is famous for having said that the universe is written in the language of mathematics and its characters are triangles, circles, and other geometrical figures, without which it is humanly impossible to understand a single word of it. Without these, one is wandering about in a dark labyrinth. Also, German astronomer and mathematician Johannes Kepler said, Geometry, which before the origin of things was co-eternal with the divine mind, and is God himself, supplied God with parents for the creation of the world. The famous physicist Albert Einstein said in his book titled The World as I See It, Our experience hitherto justifies us in believing that nature is the realization of the simplest conceivable mathematical ideas. I'm convinced that we can discover by purely mathematical constructions the concepts and the laws connecting them with each other, which furnish the key to understanding of natural phenomena. As you have seen, they all confessed the same religious belief in mathematics, which is, mathematics is the way, the truth, and the life. And this very religious belief in mathematics has been the driving force behind the development of our mathematics. Therefore, our modern mathematics is definitely the continuation of the religion of mathematics. And moreover, it is a full-blown version of this religion of mathematics. Actually, the hallmark of this religion is the real numbers because a strong religious belief in mathematics is now encapsulated in the real numbers. Furthermore, with the introduction of the real numbers, the religion of mathematics has fully bloomed. But since it requires an explanation, now I'm going to explain it in a little bit more detail. First, as I said in the third and fourth videos, the real numbers originate from geometry. More specifically, they are just a result of arithmetizing the fantasy geometry continuum, where not only do the points have no size, but these sizeless points are continuously connected to each other without any gaps. In addition, as we have seen in the previous video, these kinds of numbers being called real numbers is not coincidental but it's ultimately due to the religious belief that geometry is a body of truth and the fictional and invisible geometric figures are real. Therefore, the religious belief in geometry is encapsulated in the real numbers, but considering geometry was at the heart of mathematics at the time, we can say that the strong religious belief in mathematics is now encapsulated in the real numbers. The thing is that, these real numbers are not just one of those concepts in mathematics, but are playing the most fundamental role in modern mathematics and science. This, of course, is not coincidental either. To put it simply, this is because of their fundamental role in defining continuity. Let's look at Wikipedia. It says, the real numbers are fundamental in calculus and more generally in all mathematics in particular by their role in the classical definitions of limits, continuity, and derivatives. Also, it says, in the physical sciences, most physical constants such as the universal gravitational constant and physical variables such as position, mass, speed, and electric charge are modeled using real numbers. In fact, the fundamental physical theories such as classical mechanics, electromagnetism, quantum mechanics, general relativity, and the standard model are described using mathematical structures, typically smooth manifolds or Hilbert spaces that are based on the real numbers. The philosopher of mathematics, Solomon Pfeffermann says, 
in particular, since the real number structure and its many superstructures are at the core of the mathematics that has proved to be indispensable, one may read this view as asserting that one version or other of the continuum is part of the natural order. Also, another philosopher of mathematics, Jose Ferreiro, says, The concept of real number is a true crossroads of mathematics, where all kinds of STEM ideas meet and combine to give a fruitful outcome. One might compare it with the central square of a large city or with a knot of highways where all the main routes of a country meet. To sum up, the real numbers are the most fundamental concept in modern mathematics and science. Then, what are the implications of the fact that this fundamental mathematical concept is called real? It implies that all mathematics and science that are based on the real numbers are also regarded as real and true. What's more, considering the fact that today, science is completely mathematized and so it is viewed as the mathematical representation of nature, science being regarded as real and true ultimately means the mathematical representation of nature is regarded as real and true. Then, what does this mean? Considering that the mathematical representation of nature can never be the same as nature itself, we can see that this is exactly the fulfillment of Plato's vision, substitute mathematics for nature herself. In this regard, we can say that the religion of mathematics has fully bloomed with the introduction of the real numbers. Ironically, however, the reality is that the real numbers rather show that mathematics and science are never real and true, but rather fantasy. As I said earlier in this video, each real number originating from the fantasy geometric continuum is defined as a collection of infinitely many entities, but this is complete fantasy because it literally involves infinity. Therefore, the mathematics and science that are based on the real numbers also become fantasy. In the first video, I said mathematics is an activity that utilizes human reason at a deep and profound level. But no matter how deep and profound the reasoning is, our modern mathematics is in a sense fantasy because it's based on a fantasy. That's why the former NYU professor Morris Klein said, Science is rationalized fiction, rationalized by mathematics. But regarding mathematics, he said, artificial the mathematical account may be, a fairy tale perhaps, but one with a moral. Today, however, almost everyone who learns mathematics, blinded by this fictional character of mathematics, or inspired by the religious spirit of mathematics, think that mathematics is the most objective academic activity, so it can never be biased as opposed to other human activities. Along this line, they also believe that the laws of physics that are based on the real numbers to be the real workings of nature, thinking that nature is written in the language of mathematics, as Galileo Galilei said. So, before they know it, they are becoming disciples of Plato or believers in the religion of mathematics. To make matters worse, this phenomenon is not happening in a small area such as ancient Greece, but happening all across the world. Therefore, the religion of mathematics is now the biggest religion in the world. How did humanity end up being like this? As you can guess, it never happened instantly and automatically. It took a long period of time, but at least there were some people in history who gave their all to make this happen. Who are they and what did they do? To figure that out, we'll continue our journey. I hope you look forward to it and thank you very much for watching this video series.